Hi all, I'm Paril Jain. Let's use this intersection scenario to dive straight into how we do the planning and decision making in autopilot. So we are approaching this intersection from a side street, and we have to yield to all the crossing vehicles. Right as we are about to enter the intersection, the pedestrian on the other side of the intersection decides to cross the road without a crosswalk. Now, we need to yield to this pedestrian, yield to the vehicles from the right, and also understand the relation between the pedestrian and the vehicle on the other side of the intersection. So a lot of these intra-object dependencies that we need to resolve in a quick glance. And humans are really good at this. We look at a scene, understand all the possible interactions, evaluate the most promising ones, and generally end up choosing a reasonable one. So let's look at a few of these interactions that autopilot system evaluated. We could have gone in front of this pedestrian with a very aggressive longitudinal and lateral profile. Now obviously we are being a jerk to the pedestrian and we would spook the pedestrian and his cute pet. We could have moved forward slowly, shot for a gap between the pedestrian or, and the vehicle from the right. Again, we are being a jerk to the vehicle coming from the right, but you should not outright reject this interaction in case this is only safe interaction available. Lastly, the interaction we ended up choosing, stay slow initially, find the reasonable gap, and then finish the maneuver after all the agents pass. Now, evaluation of all of these interactions is not trivial, especially when you care about modeling the higher order derivatives for other agents. For example, what is the longitudinal jerk required by the vehicle coming from the right when you assert in front of it? Relying purely on collision checks with marginal predictions will only get you so far, because you will miss out on a lot of valid interactions. This basically boils down to solving a multi-agent joint trajectory planning problem over the trajectories of ego and all the other agents. Now, how much ever you optimize, there's going to be a limit to how fast you can run this optimization problem. It will be close to, close to order of 10 milliseconds, even after a lot of incremental approximations. Now, for a typical crowded, unpredictable lift, say you have more than 20 objects, each object having multiple different future modes, the number of relevant interaction combinations will blow up. We, the planner needs to make a decision every 50 milliseconds. So how do we solve this in real time? We rely on a framework what we call as interaction search, which is basically a parallelized research over a bunch of maneuver trajectories. The state space here corresponds to the kinematic state of ego, the kinematic state of other agents, their nominal future multiple, multimodal predictions, and all the static entities in the scene. The action space is where things get interesting. We use a set of maneuver trajectory candidates to branch over a bunch of interaction decisions and also incremental goals for a longer horizon maneuver. Let's walk through this research very quickly to get a sense of how it works. We start with a set of vision measurements, namely lanes, occupancy, moving objects. These get represented as sparse abstractions as well as latent features. We use this to create a set of goal candidates, lanes again from the lanes network, or unstructured regions which correspond to a probability mask derived from human demonstrations. Once we have a bunch of these goal candidates, we create seed trajectories using a combination of classical optimization approaches, as well as our network planner, again trained on data from the customer fleet. Now, once we get a bunch of these seed trajectories, we use them to start branching on the interactions. We find the most critical interaction. In our case, this would be the interaction with respect to the pedestrian, whether we assert in front of it or yield to it. Obviously, the option on the left is a high penalty option it likely won't get prioritized. So we branch further onto the option on the right, and that's where we bring in more and more complex interactions, building this optimization problem incrementally with more and more constraints. And the tree search keeps flowing, branching on more interactions, branching on more goals. Now, a lot of tricks here lie in evaluation of each, each of this node of the tree search. Inside each node, initially we started with creating trajectories using classical optimization approaches, where the constraints, like I described, would be added incrementally. And this would take close to one to five milliseconds per action. Now, even though this is fairly good number, when you want to evaluate more than 100 plus interactions, this does not scale. 
So we ended up building lightweight queryable networks that you can run in the loop of the planner. These networks are trained on human demonstrations from the fleet, as well as offline solvers with relaxed time limits. With this, we were able to bring the runtime down, run down to close to 100 microseconds per action. Now, the, doing this alone is not enough, because you still have this massive tree search that, that you need to go through, and you need to efficiently prune the search space. So you need to do, a, do scoring on each of these trajectories. Few of these are fairly standard. You do a bunch of collision checks. You do a bunch of comfort analysis. What is the jerk and axle required for a given maneuver? The customer fleet data plays an important role here again. We run two sets of, again, lightweight queryable networks, both really augmenting each other, one of them trained from interventions from the FST beta fleet, which gives a score on how likely is a given maneuver to result in interventions over the next few seconds. And second, which is purely on human demonstrations, human-driven data, giving a score on how close is your given selected action to a human-driven trajectory. The scoring helps us prune the search space, keep branching further on the interactions, and focus the compute on the most promising outcomes. The, the cool part about this architecture is that it allows us to create a cool blend between our data-driven approaches, where you don't have to rely on a lot of hand-engineered costs, but also ground it in reality with physics-based checks. Now, a lot of what, what I described was with respect to the agents we could observe in the scene, but the same framework extends to objects behind occlusions. We use the video feed from eight cameras to generate the 3D occupancy of the world. The blue mask here corresponds to the visibility region, we call it. It basically gets blocked at the first occlusion you see in the scene. We consume this visibility mask to generate what we call as ghost objects, which you can see on the top left. Now, if you model the spawn regions and the state transitions of these ghost objects correctly, if you tune your controlled response as a function of their existence likelihood, you can extract some really nice human-like behaviors. Now I'll pass it on to Phil to describe more on how we generate these occupancy networks. Thank you.